Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It is 1.38 on this Thursday, the 14th of July. I'm Austin Reed. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we are talking about authors and artists now. We have an author with us joining us live via Zoom is Amy Wanninger. Hello there, Amy. Welcome back. Your second time on the show. Good to see you again. Turn the speaker up. Yeah, no, it's great to see you. Thank you so much. Um, we've got, you know what, I want to get into the book uh, in just a second, but just for our viewers that haven't seen you before, can you tell us just a reminder of your story? Yeah, my name is Amy Wanner. I'm the founder and CEO of Lead in the Bubble. And Lead in the Bubble offers training and consulting around essential skills for inclusive leaders. We do this with companies that promote from within all over the world, especially in the technology, insurance, and financial services and healthcare sectors. Now, um, you also, of course, are an author. Uh, you've written a number of um, published uh, uh, books, and you've got a new one coming out. Do you want to talk about it? I do. So I have a book that is still in the works. I don't have a date yet okay. called Moving from Panic to Purpose. But when the pandemic started in 2020, I released a workbook that's a companion piece to the book that's not out yet because I was already doing trainings on how to help people respond to change in the workplace. A lot of folks at work have so many changes coming at them from different directions, whether it's changes in you know, HR policies, there's open enrollment coming up in a couple months for you know, healthcare, there's usually changes from you know, operations, from finance, from all the different places in the company, quality initiatives, new technology coming in. And I wanted to give everyday people in these companies a way to process all of these changes so that they can come out with a plan of how they're going to respond, not just react, and how they can find the opportunity in those changes to not only make themselves more comfortable, but also to advance their own careers. I mean, you know, yeah, things just the last two and a, two and a half years have been absolutely insane. Um, but it seems like, uh, yeah, things are getting better. Um, they're not perfect uh, in the whole COVID situation. But um, what I do know is a lot of people are struggling still. Yeah, well, you know, change doesn't stop. It just morphs and adapts and keeps going, and the rate of change continues to increase. Mm -hmm. And again, we're getting hit from every direction, right? There's political change, there's social change, there's economic changes that are happening right before our eyes with inflation and, and gas prices, and you know, wages were going up, and now they're starting to level off. Right. We're starting to see some companies lay off. And a lot of the work that I did in this space, a lot of the the uh, tools that I use, I actually developed uh, when I worked in tech in the early 2000s when layoffs were rampant. About every six months I'd be looking for a new job, not because I wasn't good at my job, just because my job wasn't going to be there anymore. And I learned that, you know, this notion of having one foot on solid ground is great, but you should always be feeling for your next step with your other foot. Um, and that's pretty much true in every aspect of your life, in every aspect of your work. So tell me, kind of walk us through uh, where you're at with the publication at this point. Yeah, so the workbook's already out. It's available on Amazon. It's also available on my website at Lead at Any Level. And this is a workbook that if people are struggling with any change, um, this is something that can help them right now today. The um, the full book, which will have some of these activities in it as well, but it, it reads more like a traditional book, should be out by the end of the year, by the end of 2022. Tell me a little bit uh, for, for this publication um, and eventually the book, uh, what has the journey been for you thus far? Well, you know, it's interesting because every time I think this book will no longer be relevant by the time I get it out, and we've seen all the change, right. <laughs> I find that <laughs> It's still relevant. Every single day I have people contact me who say, you know, I'm struggling with what's going on at work. I'm struggling with something that happened at home. I'm struggling with a new diagnosis. I'm struggling with some change that I'm hearing about on the news. Mm -hmm. And what I'm finding is there's no wrong time to learn to embrace and take opportunity, find the opportunity in change. Yeah, uh, I love that you bring that up. You know, I, it, it last yesterday I had just one of those days where everything could go wrong. and. Um, 
I have just myself been struggling uh, just in the last few weeks. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I mean, my daughter right now has COVID, so obviously that's oh. a nightmare, you know. Um, work is stressful. And, you know, working in broadcasting, you know, uh, this Texas, the, the shooting in Uvalde has really messed with my head. I mean, there's just so much. Yeah, and inflation, it's, it's crazy right now. So I think we all need some self-help. Yeah, and you know, I didn't want this to be a self-help book, but it, it really is. Right at the end of the day, this is a self-help book. It's how do I take all of these feelings that I have that are uncomfortable, that are keeping me stuck, mm -hmm. that are making me retreat. Um, you know, some people almost get paralyzed with fear or with grief around change. And how do I take all of that and find what's important to me and use what's important to me to move forward? And so just as a as a kind of a tip from the book, when you think about, you know, everybody's affected by change all the time, but the change that affects you in particular um, is specific to you and in the way that it affects you. So you may be really fixated, for example, on inflation is really weighing on you right now, right? And you talk to your neighbor and they don't really notice or care about inflation. They're more worried about some other issue. Or, you know, you said your daughter has COVID, which I'm so sorry. Our Thank family you. just came through Ugh. that. We all got it together. You guys are, um, you guys all better now? Yeah, everybody's all better now. Well, okay. the kids are sick again, but not with COVID. Because <laughs> they're kids, and that's oh. just the way. It goes. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. How many kiddos do you guys have? I have three. So my kids are, they all live at home. I have 20, 16, and six. Wow, no, that's I'm a sorry, big... 20, 14, and six. That's a big, uh, that's a nice little uh, age gap, too, you know? Well, you know, what it is, is I don't like change. So every time one of my kids gets old enough to not be home with me anymore, when they get on the bus, I freak out and I say, well, I guess it's time to have another one. But I think I've finally aged out of that. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, they're, 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 they're past 18 now. <laughs> but no, it is. Yeah, I think humans, we have, yeah, change is hard for humans. It's also hard for animals even, you know, in some cases, so. Um, exactly. Okay, uh, let's see. I wanted to ask you, um, any, anything else that, uh, any interesting stories, you know, you work with so many people. Um, any interesting stories that, that, that you've, uh, that, that you can think of just in the last few months of, you know, maybe some of the other authors that you work with or just something kind of cool? Yeah, so, you know, on this topic of changes, we're talking about, you know, things that are happening in the world. Mm -hmm. One of my friends called me very, very upset with some of the things that she was hearing in the news. And I I was trying really hard to be supportive, but I was upset about some of those things too. Mm -hmm. And I said, here's what we're gonna do. You know, we need to figure out why does this bother us, number one. What is it about this change that's hitting us so hard? Is it that we feel like our values are threatened? Is it that we feel like our identities are threatened? Is it that we feel like we're being judged by others? And what experiences are we bringing to this moment? So we talked about that just a little bit. And I said, okay, that's a good clue as to what's important to us. And if we can figure out what's important to us, we can figure out what the right next step is. And so she and I worked on that, right? We talked about ways that we could affect the kind of change we wanted to see mm -hmm. rather than being victimized by the kind of change we felt like we were experiencing. And I've done this with people in all kinds of different scenarios. I'll give you another example. Um, a friend of mine was struggling because she found out that her boss had betrayed her. Mm. Um, she thought she was having a private conversation with her boss. She thought it was a private conversation and he sold her out. Mm. He, he kind of exposed um, some of these kind of behind the scenes conversations they were having with some other leaders and she felt like she couldn't trust him anymore. And you know, so we what we got to was trust was really important to her. Loyalty was very important to her. Um, having a safe space was very important to her, and she felt like that had been taken away. And so, what we realized that she needed to do was create that safe space for others and be very explicit about what's discussed here stays here, and also go have a conversation with her boss about that feeling of betrayal so that they could negotiate what is important to keep between us and what is important to share 
and if something that we thought was going to be kept between us needs to be shared, what's the right process for that so that I don't feel, that, so that she didn't feel, right, that she was being kind of hung out to dry uh, by her manager. Wow. And so you can see how these kind of changes where our expectations aren't being met or we think that, you know, um, we think we're headed in one direction and we feel like the rug's been pulled out from under us. It's usually some, some area where we feel personally threatened and how do we leverage that into some opportunity to rise above, but also to help each other. Sure, yeah, work together. Um, we've got about a minute left. I wanted to ask you um, anything else that you're working on uh, as we're looking ahead to maybe the rest of 2022? I'm working on so many things. Thank you for asking. So my new project that's not book related is a new podcast called Including You. Oh. And you can find that at includingyoupodcast.com. My uh, podcast releases as a video series every Thursday at noon Eastern. It's simulcast on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And then it's released as part of the, part of the Living Corporate audio podcast series every Friday. Awesome. And so basically what I do is I interview chief diversity officers and other executives who are looking to make positive changes in their cultures of inclusion in their companies. And we talk about what's working how they know it's working and what's next for them. That is super exciting. Congrats on that. Thank you. I'm going to take, I'm going to take, can you send me that information as well? I want, to, I want to listen. Absolutely. Go to includingyoupodcast.com. Includingyoupodcast.com. I'm writing it right now. Oh, and we have it at the bottom of our screen as well. So, uh, Amy, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Uh, People can learn more about moving from panic to purpose, again, uh, on your website, and um, you're very, very active on, on all your social media platforms as well. So it's easy to find you. No, I try to make it easy. Yeah. Easy to find me and easy to work with me. I love it. I love it. Amy, good to see you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Great to see you. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good upcoming weekend. You too. I'm Austin Reed. This is Central Valley Talk.